This is Civilizations and Rise of Kingdoms. Civilization you choose in this game has a huge impact on basically the rest of the game. Whether you're talking about growth, whether you're talking about your special units towards the end of the game, or whatever stats you need for your garrison or rally if you're leading one. Civilizations can impact just about everything in the game. And it's something that you make maybe one or two decisions on and then forget about. So in today's video, we're going to be going over each civilization by unit type, what they excel at, what they're weak at, and what the best overall selections you have for each troop type. Without further ado, let's get started. First, let's talk about the cavalry civilizations. For cavalry, you have Germany, you have Spain, you have Arabia, and you have Byzantium. Each of them have their own unique benefits and their own unique drawbacks. First, let's go over Byzantium. Byzantium gives yourself 5% cavalry health, 10% stone gathering speed, and 15% hospital capacity. The 5% cav health is super useful, although their special unit does not carry any extra health. Instead, they get extra defense, which is decent still and good for the field. And the hospital capacity is also good for the field. Because of this, Byzantium tends to make a very excellent field leading civilization with the cataphracts and then the overall Byzantine civilization with the extra hospital capacity. Next, we have Arabia. Arabia is the rally civilization with the 10% damage dealt by rallied army or 5% damage dealt by rallied armies rather. And then 10% damage dealt to neutral units make it makes them great in KVKs for rallying circles and anything else that you use a cav rally for against barbarians. Their special unit gets bonus health, which is nice, and some bonus attack, which is also great. So overall, it's a very solid unit as well. And the attack wall is not as great overall for the units for the cav attack on the actual civilization bonus. The special units do more than enough to make this the rally lead and the choice for rally overall. Next, we have Spain, which gives 5% cavalry defense, 10% experience gain, and 20% resource production. This is probably the worst civ out of all of them. You get no health and no defense on the special unit and just gain attack. And then the cavalry defense is decent, but there's not enough to give any sort of bonus. And then the other two passive bonuses just don't do anything for you in the late game. So this is probably one of the worst civs overall and definitely the worst cavalry civilization you have out of the options. Next, for Germany, you have 5% cavalry attack, which is mediocre, 5% troop training speed, and 10% action point recovery. The special unit, gives some additional health and some additional defense, making it very, very solid as a special unit. On top of the fact that you gain a little bit of attack, which I could take or leave, and then the 5% training speed and 10% action point recovery, this makes a great farming civilization for if you have a farmer count that's calves. This makes a great uh, KVK honor farming or in between KVKs to rebuild troops. And is decent in garrisons just because the Arabia Civilization rally damage does not apply to garrisons. So you'll see some garrison players run Germany as well for that reason. Because the bonus to health is super useful and you get the same amount of bonus health that you would using Arabia as a sieve. So you'll see this used a lot especially like I said in farm civilizations as well. So overall the rankings are that Arabia is best for rally. Um, Germany is a solid second option alongside Arabia for garrisons. For the field, uh, your cataphracts with Byzantines and Germany are your best two options. And left choking on the dust, of course, are the conquistadors of Spain. Next, we are on to archers. You have a lot of options with archers between Britain, China, Egypt, Korea, and of course the Ottomans. So, just like before, we'll start with the Ottomans and work our way back. The Ottomans give 5% archer health, 5% troop march speed, and 5% skill damage on commanders. 
when you take as well that the stats on the units for the ottomans are also heavy on attack but you get the additional health this is oftentimes the favorite of rally leaders when it comes to archer civilizations and it's hard not it's hard to not see why the skill damage is super useful and there's no current normal damage archers that happen in the rally and field and field or garrison meta that are enough that this five percent skill damage is really a sacrifice the archer health is super useful and the march speed is utilized in basically everything so it is far and away one of the favorites next of course are the warang they give five percent archer defense 15 percent hospital capacity and three percent research the overall bonus stat you get on the special unit is defense which is solid and you'll see this used a lot for field-based players that want to have that extra hospital capacity. But overall, the units don't stand up nearly as well to, to the Janissaries and to some of these other units. But they are solid, and that you'll see them running around, especially if you're in between T4 and T5 and you want to use that research speed. You'll see it pretty often. Next, we'll talk about China. China gets the 3% troop defense. 5% action point recovery, and 5% building speed. This is like the opposite of Korea, where you get a whole bunch of extra stats. And then similarly, while Korea had the bonus attack and then unit defense, China has bonus defense and unit attack. So they're very similar, and it's really just a matter of preference a lot of times when it comes to this, if you're going to use them for the field. But the action point recovery isn't nearly as useful as the hospital capacity. Egypt is the middle ground. You get the archer attack. Rallied army damage is 5%. This is really the only huge competitor to the Ottomans. And then 1.5% building research, splitting the difference between Korea and China. This is really, really underappreciated. And even though China gets the 5% instead of the 1.5%, Egypt is probably 1A to Ottomans 1, if not outright first place, because there's just so much versatility in the civilization. And it's just great from day one to day whatever day you happen to be on. So it's a great option. Lastly, Britain has 5% archer attack, 5% troop training speed, and 20% ally garrison capacity. The ally garrison capacity is completely useless. You don't get any health on this stat. The defense bonus you get is non-existent because you don't get one. And then the you pretty much have all your points in attack. This is pretty much the weakest civilization of the grouping and is in dead last. So in summary, for rallies, your typical most often are the Ottomans or Egypt, depending on your preference. For garrisons, the Ottomans is a good option. For the field, China and Korea are good options, with Korea being the better overall option due to the hospital capacity. And choking on everyone else's dust, of course, is Britain. Lastly, let's talk about infantry civilizations. So you have a lot of options here because the most recent two expansions of the three have all been infantry civs. So you have Greece, you have Rome, you have France, you have the Vikings, and you have Japan. So just like the other three, we're going to work our way back. So Japan is a 3% attack, 30% scout march speed, and 5% gathering speed. The special unit gets additional attack so that's not very good so you don't get a lot of defensive stats you don't get a lot of health the bonus scout march speed is nice and the five percent resource gathering speed really is a non-factor so this is one of the weaker civilizations of the infantry civs and you might see this on farms on occasion for the extra gathering speed but really outside of that there's not a lot that does well for you next we have the Vikings. The Vikings get 5% attack, 3% counterattack damage, and 10% troop load. These are all really, really good. You get bonus health on the special unit. You get bonus, a little bit of bonus attack, which is not really a factor. But the health and counterattack make them great in the field against Swarm. The troop load doesn't really come into factor unless you are looting a city, but it does apply to your siege as well so you lose you'll use slightly less siege in the field but overall it's kind of a wash on the stats but you get a, the health which is the second most health among any of the units and you get that counterattack damage which is super great against swarm 
Next, for France, you get 3% troop health, which is all troop health, not just infantry, 20% wood gathering speed, and 20% hospital healing speed. This is still like the keystone field infantry play for civilizations. The special units all health. The health bonus applies to all your troops. The wood gathering speed, I could take it or leave it. But the 20% hospital healing speed is super significant as well. So overall, this is the field one. A lot of rallies will use it too, and a lot of garrisons will use it because the health is just so overwhelmingly strong. Next, we have Rome, which gets 5% infantry defense, 5% troop march speed, and 10% food gathering speed. This is all right. The defense is nice, and the march speed is nice for field. But the special unit just gets bonus defense. You don't have any bonus health, so it gets outclassed pretty heavily by France and by the Vikings, but you'll still see a lot of people who like to have the mobility that'll use it in the field. Last, but certainly not least, we have Greece, which gives 5% infantry health versus the all health of uh, France, but it's a higher number, 5% rallied army damage, and 10% stone gathering speed. This is the only real competition with France when it comes to rallies, and I think it's probably a better option for rallies, but for garrisons in field, you might be better off sticking with France just because the sheer amount of health you get. The unit's pretty solid for Greece. And then, like I said, the rallied army damage is really where it's at. And you'll see pretty much every rally leader using this right now. So, in summary, for rallies, you're going to want to use uh, you're going to want to use Greece, of course. For garrisons in the field, you'll see a lot more France with some people in the field also vying for Rome or the Vikings. And really, Japan is in the dust, more or less focusing on the farmer aspect, if at all. Lastly, let's talk about some times where you might want to think about changing civilizations. Civilization changes build up over time, and they really just gather dust unless you use them. Here are a couple situations where you might want to change civilizations, even temporarily. The first is if you are planning on recovering between KVKs or having a recovery KVK, using a troop like or a civilization like Germany or Britain that does training speed is super useful because then you can get more troops. Also, the action point recovery is super useful. I personally use Germany at a minimum in between KVKs if I have the civilization swaps for them, just because you have the action point recovery and the training speed to help keep everything moving. And that little bit does add up, especially if you are looking to save some investment and if you are a free-to-play that don't, does not spend on the game. Some other things are for major researches and builds, you can switch to China or Korea. Or if you want to do it long-term, switch to Egypt. Even if you're planning on being an infantry player or a cap player, doing this while you're developing is super useful. And the regular units you get, the regular long swordsmen and the regular knights, are still decent stats so you're missing out on a little bit of base stat but you're not going to really see that in the long run and you will however see the five or six days you're shaving off of your researches and your technologies over the course of your full researches by using these sieves with the increased bonuses another thing is if you are planning on doing a lot of field fighting or you're planning on just healing a lot some people who have a lot of these sieve changes will switch to France and run their hospital healing speed for a week or two and then switch back before the next combat. That is a much more risky proposition that I'm not really particularly interested in, but it is something that does happen a lot. Uh, but overall, the biggest thing is maybe changing to Germany or Britain for the increased training speed or switching to a civilization that has the increased AP regeneration while you recover, or if you're gonna take a KVK off as a kingdom, that's another thing to do, although that decision is entirely up to you and your kingdom, of course. But with that, we're going to wrap up our discussion on civilizations. I know this is a very ground level explanation, but I, would, I wanted to touch base on what each civilization really excelled at so that you can make your own decision and make your own assessment as to what you want to do with yours. But let me know in the comments, what civilization are you rocking for your city? Let me know. If you want to see me cover another topic, anything from A to Z, let me know down there as well, because oftentimes these requests become future video topics. But without further ado, good luck, fight well, and I will see you on the battlefield with one of these civs.